Story of how two people went bankrupt simultaneously. <laughs> What is up y'all welcome back to the Pokenova server and you're watching episode 11. Now you may be noticing that my audio does sound a little bit different again from the last episode and that's because I actually did get myself some soundproofing. Hopefully it sounds a little bit better than it did last time but it still might not sound perfect and in that case I might need to fiddle around with my soundproofing a little bit more in the future. Hopefully it sounds pretty good. Let me know down in the comments below what y'all think. In today's episode, I want to try playing Pixelmon for what it actually has to offer, not just make bad jokes and kind of mess around while having fun. Fun is important, of course, but I haven't really done much Pixelmon work for a Pixelmon series, so I figured that's a pretty important aspect that I should really consider. But before that, let's have a quick little distraction and go back a few episodes to something I forgot to add that I really wanted to. Wow. That is a lot of money. For context, Overall actually messaged me while I was on the server and asked if I had the Battle Pass Premium. I of course did not have it since I was too broke and it cost about $2 million to buy it in game. Otherwise you could buy it with actual money and the Pokenova store. And since Overall went ahead and bought this for me, I was uh, really happy. In fact, Tampi was actually going to purchase the Battle Pass Premium for me beforehand since Dunk bought the Battle Pass Premium for him. He wanted to pay it forward and pay it to me. However, since Overall just bought it for me, Tommy ended up buying it for Chris, and this led to a series of really funny situations that happened, and I'll play them throughout the entirety of the episode. So, hopefully, y'all enjoy. I mean, I like I like making funny because you're part of me now. Oh, I like, that means I'm so Richard and Tommy. I'm crying in the hole. Things I do for people. I just gave Chris okay. too little, and now she's making fun of me for being poor. It's okay. It's okay. Get it all out. Get it all out. <laughs> I can give you a potato. Get a goddamn potato! <laughs> <laughs> I can give you a little picture. It's just money. You'll get it back again. You have financially ruined Tommy. <laughs> oh, time to disconnect for the year. <laughs> I feel like you. Poor. Yes. I'm definitely I'm poor now too. Dollar. Wait. He just called me poor. I don't know how I'm gonna ever financially recover from this. <sighs> Friend, you're richer than me at this. That's a W. Oh, wait. Okay, so before we completely lose traction of the entire episode, let's cut the story for right now and come back to it later. So let's go do some Pixelmon stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is something specific to this server, which is a bingo card. Let's go ahead and try catching these Pokemon to get some big prizes. Hopefully I can get lucky and catch any of these Pokemon. <laughs> oh, I am terribly unlucky. So the goal of bingo is to catch all of the Pokemon on this list. And when you catch all of them, especially in a row or a column, you get a reward. And when you catch every single Pokemon on your bingo list, you get yourself a random shiny. And this can be a legendary as well. One flaw with my plan of trying to complete this bingo card was the fact that there was a ton of Pokemon on here that were considered ultra rare in Pixelmon. And because of that, I ended up not being able to find all of these Pokemon within the time limit I was given, which was 24 hours. And in the end, I decided to give up and just start working on my Orb of Static Souls, which is for Zapdos. And to do this, I just needed to defeat a ton of Pokemon. So basically, I caused a mass extinction in the process. W. Well, maybe not a W, but you know, I won in the end. But anyways, now we got ourselves a static soul. Uh, wow, that is huge. Look at the size of this thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's bigger than my head. But anyways, now that we have this, we can go ahead to slash warp altars and we can go find the Zapdos altar and summon it to catch it ourselves. Now that we found the altar, we just go ahead and right click it with the orb and there we go, we have the legendary Zapto spawned on us. Now we just gotta go ahead and catch it and I don't, I'm too lazy right now to catch it with anything else, so let's just go ahead and use a Master Ball. I'll have to farm these later on in the future, but that's fine, that's, that's, that's a problem for future me. And future me continues to hate current me for several different reasons. Anyways, the Master Ball should be done. Yes, let's go, we have caught ourselves on the legendary Zapdos. Let's go! Anyways, back to your regular scheduled video. I didn't even hear a single thank you or anything. <laughs> Just dip. 
I don't know how I can pay this one forward, I'm not gonna lie. I can think of a few things. <laughs> you got a camera, don't you? I do. Huh? Next up on my list of things to do for Pixelmon is a battle with Chris. Because Chris is still new to Pokemon as a whole, Chris wanted to try out some team building and try it against my team. I made the mistake of bringing along my Mudskip, which is, uh, you know, level 7 and uh, unevolved and completely unbuilt, so let's see how this battle turns out. Unexpectedly, Mudkip ended up doing better damage than I thought it would. However, it still would end up dying because eh, it's a Mudkip. What can it do against a full-blown Mega Charizard Y with fully kitted out stuff? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. I still have the rest of my team. Let's see how the rest of this goes. One of my staples of my teams tends to be Gyarados because it's just so flexible and it's so powerful. So I pulled that out, destroyed the Charizard because it's super effective against fire. Now Chris pulled out Venusaur and Venusaur is super effective against my Gyarados. So hopefully, hopefully my bounce works and destroys it in one hit. And of course it did because bounce is such an OP move. Now you may be wondering, why did you use the Z move for the bounce? And that's because, well, I can use that later. Since I'm saving it, it allows me to use it now against this Gengar and one-shot it since I didn't have any super effective moves. Basically, Gyarados is a sweeper. If I had the hidden ability, Gyarados would only become more unstoppable and scarier. Now that Gengar's out, the next Pokemon up is, of course, uh, Zacian. Ooh, okay, Zacian is a little bit more of a problem because I don't have as much against it besides Earthquake. So if this Earthquake doesn't one-shot it, oh it didn't, my Gyarados is out. Looking back on it, my next option here, which was Tyranitar, probably wasn't the best option. Sensation actually does come with a bunch of fighting type attacks usually, I think. I could probably get one-shot pretty easily. Also, Fairy is super effective against Dark, if I remember correctly. Oh, and I died immediately because Steel is also super effective against Dark. My next Pokemon was, for some reason, Lunala? And I don't really understand why I did that since Ghost or Flying or Psychic or whatever other moves I have on my Lunala are not super effective at all against uh, Zacian. I honestly don't know why I picked it. Maybe it was because uh, I thought Behemoth Blade was a fighting type attack and not a steel one. But at least I took out the Zacian. But now I have to deal with a... Uh, whatever this thing is called. I forgot. Um, I think it's Zamazenta. That sounds about right. Yeah. But uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm dead here. I couldn't move fast enough. So next up is, of course, maybe Iron Moth because fire is super effective against steel and it looks like this is a crowned uh, Zamazenta. Oh, I didn't pick. Never mind, I picked out Darmanitan. Oh, well, that was dumb. I should have picked out Iron Moth first. Well, here's Iron Moth. Maybe I can move faster and it looks like no. At least I survived the hit. I should be able to kill it. Yes. But that leaves another Pokemon. Oh, it's Tyranitar. I have no chance. There's no way I can win this. I am out. <laughs> GG, Chris. This was uh, a pretty good fight. I thought it was an enjoyable battle. Fine, I'll give you $10. Slowly making my money back. Slowly but surely. Making my way back to the top. This is the story of a hero who lost all his money. He's not a hero. Oh. This is the story of a Tommy who lost all his money. <laughs> Beep! <laughs> he lost his money for a good cause, but nobody recognized him for it. <laughs> if I wasn't poor, I would give you all my money. <laughs> <laughs> you barely even wanted to give me 5000 Okay, so we're nearing the end of the episode, but I want to continue doing my Pixelmon stuff. So let's go ahead and get started with some breeding. This is the first time I've ever bred anything on this server, or on Pixelmon in general. And this is the first time I've bred anything in Pokemon in several years. The last time I bred something in Pokemon was back in Sword and Shield. And even then, that's such a long time ago, I don't even remember any of the rules for breeding. The main thing I remember that Pokemon did not do is require resources to breed. I guess it makes sense in the Pixelmon sense, but it is really annoying to have to collect a bunch of materials materials to, in order to breed. And there's also a much bigger time limit in terms of how long it would take for an egg to be made. I ended up just using some hourglasses to completely speed up the process so I can see what the egg does and how long it actually takes to hatch. One way to hatch your Pokemon quickly is to do slash P warp and look through the warps to find an egg hatcher owned by Red, where you can just run around and uh, try to hatch your egg. This thing is built up on a bunch of ice with a bunch of these uh, booster pads which make you run along the track, and you can just run around like this and speed up the process. This is really awesome. Thank you, Red. Little did I know that I would end up getting addicted to breeding yet again. I used to breed all the time in Pokemon games because that was my favorite thing to do. I love shiny hunting and hunting for the perfect IVs, and 
And even here in Pixelmon, I've already gone ahead and hatched several dozen, maybe even about a hundred or so Marinis, which I'm eventually gonna have to release or sell until I get a perfect Marini. And even then, I still have to go ahead and find myself a hidden ability Marini so I can get myself my perfect Toxapex. This might take a while. Next up on my list of fun things to do is a new mini game called Pictionary, which is here on the Pokinova server. I can't wait to do this. This is one of my favorite games to play in real life as well. I love playing guessing games, even though I'm really bad at guessing. Because for some reason, when it comes time for me to guess something, everything goes blank. I can't remember what exists. For example, here, I just could not come up with a single answer. If you want to play along, go ahead and leave some comments down below trying to guess as well. Uh, let's see. So I put down a few different answers myself. For example, I put in Eevee, I put in an Applin, because it does look like it has those little leaves on top, but then it does a little curve like this, and I'm like, oh, what is this? Maybe it's a Pichu, right? Let's try, let's try Pichu, because maybe that's the answer. Turns out that was also wrong, and uh, eventually, someone actually did get the answer right. Good job, Anubis. It looks like Barry got it here, but Anubis actually said it just beforehand. So we played three more rounds of this, and I'm going to speed it up, because I don't think y'all want to sit here and sit through three to five minutes of just building like this and some guessing. So uh, try to leave some comments down below if you can guess it before someone else guesses it. So the previous answer was Spectreer. And this one right here is about to be one, and it is actually Nakli. This last one is... let's see how long this one takes. This one might take a little bit because it was a little bit more of a difficult guess. I thought it was something else, but I don't know. The answer does make sense in the end. I would have guessed Lunala here, I think, but I was completely wrong, I think. Uh... <laughs> Red, Red says that this was uh, horrendous, but all things considered, I think this looks pretty good for what it is. <laughs> Purple Charizard. Uh, it is actually... Hoopa. Yes, it's confined Hoopa. Because, uh, yeah, I don't really know what that is myself, but I think it looks pretty good. I don't really care about money. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's what you heard. You're literally complaining about being poor. As you were making fun of me for being poor! Uh, not really. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I reject- I just refused to give you 5,000 and you went on this whole thing. You literally said I love making fun of me. <laughs> I didn't. Did, did Chris not say I love making fun of me because you're poorer than me and Red? I mean, I like- I like making fun of you because you're poorer than me now. Keep that in the video so they know Chris really did make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in, so they're like, oh, Beep. he wasn't lying. But if it's not in the video, I will yell at you. <laughs> if it is, I'll, I won't. Okay. No proof. There's no proof, but Brandon recorded the whole thing. <laughs> Did you record whether... that part? Yes. I've been recording this whole time. Of course, everything. Cut this. <laughs> 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 Anyways, thank you all for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. I really enjoyed this little interaction here because it was one of my favorite things that's happened on the server so far. It's just, I don't know. I should have had it in a couple of episodes ago, but I just completely forgot about it. I blanked. I fumbled the ball so hard. So hopefully you all forgive me and enjoy this episode. So anyways, thank you all for watching. And of course, have a good one, y'all.